dare to say it, we've got some consistency and some stability at the top. It's a Friday edition. Let's do this. It's Locked On Lions. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a pleasant good Friday afternoon, everybody. Matt Derry with you. It is another edition of Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network of Friday, January 27th into the weekend in div- uh, Divisional, geez, Championship Sunday, January 29th. What's going on? Let's do this again, shall we? On the Locked On Podcast Network, thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can find us on Twitter at Derry Speaks at Locked On Lions. The Matt Derry Facebook fan page where we post the podcast each and every day. And also, again, the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Locked On Lions today is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Locked On NFL. Coming up on the show today, all of these teams still looking for head coaches can't find one. And a lot of people are backing out because maybe they're questioning ownership other places. But guess where ownership's not being questioned right now? Here in Detroit, the Sheila effect on the show today. We'll talk about that. Uh, Right guard situation. We've not really touched much about this. I touched on this much, but I had a buddy of mine uh, hit me up today, said he was watching the Lions-Packers game again, and he said, right guard's a problem. It might be. What are the uh, options at right guard for the Lions? We'll get into that. And also, Aaron Glenn getting another opportunity and another interview. Where? We will tell you. Coming up here on Lockdown Lions. And, of course, Championship Sunday coming up this weekend. You've got uh, the 3 o'clock game. Eagles and 49ers from Philly. I think Philly's just going to be too good and too tough. They're just so talented all across the board. I mean, you look everywhere. Their receiving core. The running backs are deep. Quarterback is good. Their corners are so good. Um, I like Philly in that game. I think it's going to be tough for a rookie quarterback in a, in a, a championship game. I think the last four all lost, like Roethlisberger, Flacco, um, among others that started. Uh, 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 Sean King that started as, as rookies in a title game did not get to the Super Bowl. I think it's going to be difficult for Brock Purdy to do that on the road. Um, also, um, the 630 game, Kansas City hosting Cincinnati. Everyone's talking about Burrowhead Stadium and how Joe Burrow is going to take over. Isn't it the Chiefs' time again to get back to the Super Bowl? And will Mahomes do some crazy things? Cincinnati's defense is better than Kansas City's. But uh, we'll have to see about that coming up on a Sunday. But, um, you know, I was thinking about this today and I wanted to get into it. Um, Sheila Hamp now has done a pretty darn good job as owner of the Lions over the last couple of years. And certainly... She was questioned at the start of this season at one and six. Why is she sticking with Dan Campbell? This is a disaster. SOL, all this stuff. She's just like her dad. She's just like her mom. But all in all, it looks like right now, the Lions are going to be the favorites to win the NFC North next year. The people that Sheila has put into place, um, whether it's front office folks like Chris Spielman or Brad Holmes on the coaching staff with Dan Campbell and the fact that she has stepped away and has not been a distraction. You see how Dan Campbell after games has given her game balls and talked about the support, but you don't see Sheila around a lot. And you see her kind of doling out, delegating and elevating as opposed to some of these other owners around the NFL. And I was thinking about this because I saw another Joey Molinero video today. For those of you that follow Joey Molinero on Twitter or, or see his videos, he's out of Indianapolis and he's absolutely hilarious doing the voices, doing the impersonations of people Joey Molinero put out a video about a month and a half ago of Jim Ursay calling Jim Harbaugh, and it was unbelievable. And today he put out a new one with Chris Ballard talking to Jim Ursay about hiring Jeff Saturday and how Ursay wants Jeff Saturday. And it's just the invitation he does of Ursay is great. But if you're a Colts fan, you're probably saying to yourself, can we get a good coach? Is it going to be Jeff Saturday who didn't show much? as somebody that had no experience in the interim spot this year, and you sort of laugh a little bit 
at what Jim Irsay has done with the Colts. Then you look at the Houston Texans. It appears D'Amico Ryans, the Niners DC, could be the guy. But the McNairs haven't exactly lit the world on fire the last couple of years with botching the hiring of Brian Flores being forced to then not hire Flores as Flores got out of that. Then they had to do Lovey for a year. David McCulley, or whatever his name was a year before that. It's been a it's been a bleep show down in Houston. And why can't the Texans find a coach yet, unless it's D'Amico Ryans and they're just waiting for the Niners to be done. And then in Arizona with the Cardinals, Dan Quinn had that job if he wanted it. And yesterday, the Cowboys defensive coordinator and former Falcons head coach took his name out of the running. Basically said, I'm going to stay in Dallas. I want to see this through. Same thing Ben Johnson said when he stayed here in Detroit. I want to stay, be an assistant, see this through. Obviously, Ben Johnson probably got a bump up in pay. And you got to figure Jerry Jones to keep Dan Quinn around gave him a raise too. But you've got assistant coaches, really good ones, who deserve to be head coaches and deserve another opportunity like Quinn or an opportunity like Ben Johnson. And they're, they're, they're balking from being around Houston, Indy, or Arizona. Sean Payton is out there. Sean Payton is out there, but is he going to take one of these jobs or, or no? Because I think what he's looking at is ownership, what's going on at the top. And in places like Indy, Arizona, Houston, it's shaky. But we used to talk about that here. You look now at what's in place down at 222. It's solid. Have we seen any assistant coaches jump ship and leave Detroit because they don't like the situation? No. Have we seen any players say, I can't wait to get out of there like they used to under Quintricia? No. At the very, very top, things are going well. And Sheila Hamp deserves credit. You have to give her credit. It seems like she is putting the right people in place, letting them do their jobs. There isn't infighting. We're not hearing about this person, this assistant GM wants to do this or that, or coaches wanting to do this or that. All is quiet down at 222 Rodwood Drive there in Allen Park. And that is a credit and a testament to the owner. Because that it all the fish rots from the head. Everything starts at the very, very top. We've talked about that with some of the local teams here. We've talked about that with some of the owners who own certain areas around arenas. No names, please. Those teams don't win and haven't won in a long time. The one winner we've got in town right now is the Lions. So give Sheila some credit. Uh, Things seem to be trending upward and everything is hunky-dory, as they say, uh, down in Allen Park. All right, what are the Lions going to do at right guard? What's the very latest on Aaron Glenn? We're going to get to all of that coming up next right here on a Friday edition of Locked On Lions, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We thank you for uh, checking us out. we got to tell you about our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023, all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. All right? I've used LinkedIn Jobs before. It's really, really easy. You just put that hiring tab up there, and you put your job in there, and they've got all these questions in there. It's great. They help you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools, all right? Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. Makes it easy to screen people out and rate applicants based on your job qualifications on just one platform. Looking to hire a couple of folks, um, whether it's marketing, whether it's business development, whether it's sales, whatever it is, check out LinkedIn Jobs. They're number one in delivering qualified hires and quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so um, I told you a friend of mine, uh, the legendary Al, that's all I will go by. 
texted me today and said he was re-watching the Lions and Packers game week 18 and how poorly, if we recall, right guard Evan Brown played in that game. And we've been talking so much about mock drafts. We mentioned yesterday's Mel Kuyper Jr. mock draft where he had the Lions taking Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher from Texas Tech in the first round uh, with the first pick at number six. And then the second pick at 18, Christian Gonzalez, one of the four elite cornerbacks in this draft out of Oregon. And that's David Blau's brother-in-law. Christian Gonzalez is a really good player. And I said, I would love it. I'm all for the Lions going defense and more defense. I'm all for it. Edge rusher, fine. If they get a D tackle, great. They got to get cornerback for sure. But what about right guard? We know Brad Holmes inherited some very good offensive linemen when he came to Detroit. Uh, Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, those guys uh, were drafted by previous regimes, Taylor Decker. And of course, we know Brad Holmes went out and got with his first first round pick he's ever had as a Lions general manager, uh, Penny Sewell um, from Oregon. And Sewell's been unbelievably good. He's fantastic, actually. So what about right guard? Would you spend a first round pick on a right guard or second round pick? Um, you know, on a guard because next year, you know, going left to right, you're going to have Taylor Decker back. You're going to have Jonah Jackson back at left guard. Frank Ragnow is a Pro Bowl center. Right guard, you're not sure. And right tackle, you got Panay Sewell. You got some decent depth uh, with some of the guys that have filled in the last couple of years, like Evan Brown, uh, like Tommy Kramer, Dan Skipper, guys like that have been okay. Lions offensive line is very well coached under Hank Fraley. So it's a lot of plug and play. But yes, in the game against Green Bay in Week 18, Evan Brown did not play well. Evan Brown was excellent two years ago as the backup center to Frank Ragnow. And once Ragnow was lost for the year, Brown stepped right in and did well. Well, Evan Brown is an unrestricted free agent. Will he be brought back? Or does another team sign him to be their center and he would make more money going somewhere else? Then the question arises about Halapulavati Vaitai, who of course had surgery during the season as it was lost for the year. I believe it was back surgery. So Vitae has two more years left on a pretty fat contract. I think he signed a four-year, $40 million deal a couple of years ago and has two more years left on that deal. Uh, actually, Vitae signed a five-year contract. Excuse me, five years. So he, it was one year with Quinn and Patricia and then the last two uh, under Bradley Holmes. So vitai has got two years left. If the Lions were to cut bait from Vitae and release him, uh, they would save themselves $6.5 million uh, on the salary cap if that move was made. Now remember, Vitae is not young. He's 30 now. So is he coming back from back surgery, and do you want to plug him back in? I thought he played very well last season, two years ago. Um, this past year, he only played in a handful of games, had the back surgery, and was lost for the year. So that's an interesting question to ask because the Lions don't really have a young guy that they could move in there. I mean, Logan Stenberg certainly is not the guy. Uh, Tommy Kramer is more of a, uh, you know, a depth piece. Evan Brown, they could re-sign and bring back and have him play right guard. But second half of the year this year, I thought he regressed a little bit. So, you know, I'll be interested in seeing where the Lions go when it comes to the draft and how high they are on some of these interior um, offensive linemen that are in this draft. You know, I'm a big Olu fan from Michigan, but he was a center. He'll probably be a center at the next level. Um, just off the top of my head. You know, I'm not going to sit here and break down all the right guards, but could the Lions take an interior offensive lineman with one of those two picks? I would probably venture to say more 18 than six with that pick, but keep an eye on that because I do agree that Evan Brown, toward the end of the year, did not have the kind of season that he had um, last year when he played for Frank Ragnow and played a lot, played center, and did a pretty darn good job. Lions offensive line is really good. It's really good. But the one missing piece, the one lock, because you know Decker's going to be back. You know Jackson's going to be back. Ragnow, oh my gosh, he could be here forever, as far as I'm concerned. Panay Sewell is going to be here the next 10 years. Lions are going to have to pay Panay Sewell after his rookie deal is done. But do the Lions save themselves six and a half million, cut by Ty, let Brown walk, and then draft a cheaper on a rookie deal right guard? You know, Jonah Jackson was drafted a few years ago um, and moved over, obviously, to left guard after um, he came in, TJ Lang retired. You know, all the all the different, you know, 
moves that the Lions made. But uh, that's something to definitely keep an eye on. It wouldn't surprise me if the Lions took an interior offensive lineman with one of their five first of 82 picks that they have. Then you just plug him in and put him at right guard, and he's on a rookie deal. All right, will Aaron Glenn be back with the Lions? Ian Rappaport had some interesting news today about the Lions' defensive coordinator. We will uh, discuss that when we come back. But first, got to talk about FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here. Championship Sunday this weekend. We're excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the best. They're number one, the number one sports book in America, and that is FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, you join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. All you got to do is go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. They get all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props, whatever sport it is, wings, pistons, college basketball. Uh, did anybody see that bad beat last night in the Washington State Arizona game? My goodness. But if you made that bet on FanDuel, you were following it late into the night last night. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. All right, so Rap Sheet Ian Rappaport was on the uh, Pat McAfee show today and was asked what is going on in Arizona or when's the next coaching hire going to take place. And Rap, uh, Rappaport said he wasn't sure about that, but that Arizona could go out and get Sean Payton right now and obviously have to make a move, a trade, with the New Orleans Saints, send over draft picks, compensation, whatever it is, because Payton is still under contract with New Orleans. But if the Cardinals decide not to do that and Peyton doesn't want to play for the Bidwell family or coach for the Bidwell family, Ian Rappaport said today that there are, there are three others that are going to be getting second interviews out in Arizona. Isiro Evero, the defensive coordinator with the Broncos, Brian Flores, the former head coach of the Dolphins and was a defensive assistant, of course, with the Pittsburgh Stellars this past year, and our very own future head coach, Aaron Glenn, would receive an interview, a second interview, is receiving a second interview next week with the Birds, with the Cardinals. So maybe the Birds or the Eagles, whatever. But Aaron Glenn getting another opportunity. And what's interesting about that is you look at that situation, you say, wouldn't an offensive coach be Kyler Murray's first choice? They seem to be appeasing their quarterback. All right, it was no secret that Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury weren't seeing eye to eye. Kyler may not even play until the end of next season after tearing his ACL. He may need an entire year. If you recall, he got hurt in December. But he's going to have a say, it sounds like, in what's going on out there with their coach. And there you got three defensive assistants, including our very own Aaron Glenn, the Lions defensive coordinator, who are going to be getting second interviews with Arizona if they don't get Sean Payton. Now, when the Cardinals interviewed Glenn last Saturday, um, I, le- I read a lot of things online, and especially from Cardinal people saying, Aaron Glenn's defenses statistically the last two years have sucked. Why would we want that? But again, second half of this season, after the first seven games, the Lions defense made terrific strides. You saw players on the defensive side of the ball improve and get better. Isaiah Bugs. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez, Alex Anzalone had a better year this year. Kirby Joseph became a better player. Deshaun Elliott elevated his game. Jerry Jacobs got better as the season wore on. Um, so that could be made, that could be your argument for Aaron Glenn. But he's got a chance. I'm, I'm not sitting here going, oh my gosh, they got to hire Ejiro Evero or oh Brian Flores. Aaron Glenn has a shot for sure to become the head coach of Arizona, if they don't hire um, Sean Payton. So, you know, Broncos still have the opening too. Colts, Cardinals, Texans, with uh, Frank Reich taking the job uh, in Carolina. So it's something to definitely check out, and we'll see what happens next week when uh, AG gets an opportunity uh, to talk to the Cardinals once again. 
All right, there is your Friday edition of Locked On Lines, everybody. Thanks for checking us out this entire week. We are back again next week. We'll go to Mobile next week, talk to Andrew Siciliano, who will be on the call of the Senior Bowl for NFL Network next week. Of course, Andrew from NFL Network as well. And uh, we'll talk to him next week right here on Locked On Lines. Have a safe and relaxing weekend, everybody.